Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Two tacticians new to their clubs faced off at the bridge when Eric Ten Hag's United visited Graham Potter's Blues. The match ended 1-0 thanks to a Jorginho penalty and a last-minute Casemiro equaliser. The XG showed that this was basically the deserved score, although Jorginho's penalty accounts for 0.75 of Chelsea's XG. But both managers made tactical decisions that heavily influenced the match. So in this video, we'll assess both managers' tactics. And we'll begin by looking at United in possession. And this match can essentially be split into before and after Kovacic came on. In general, when United were building up, Chelsea were not the most aggressive in their press. And for the most part, United set up in a 4-1-4-1, with Fernandes and Eriksen pushing much higher than Casemiro was. And Chelsea would essentially look to set up in a high to mid block that looked like their default shape. Something like this. And Chelsea were highly conscious of the fact that in their default shapes, there were 3 versus 2 down in the midfield. So they had to look for ways to compensate for this. Initially, this would be by Aubameyang remaining deeper, as well as Sterling, allowing Aubameyang to tie up Casemiro, meaning it became a 3 versus 3. Mount, on the other hand, had a bit more flexibility, as he could stay deeper or look to push higher, particularly when Martinez was getting on the ball. This was primarily because Martinez is better on the ball than Varane and tends to be the centre-back who can make these penetrative passes. So by having Mount be much more aggressive than Sterling, he could potentially look to pressure Martinez and then the ball will go out to Varane, who is less skilled on the ball, at which point Aubameyang could then spring out looking to pressure him whilst Mount dropped in. And they did have some success with this. So Sterling tended to operate much deeper than the other two centre-forwards with Aubameyang tasked with tracking Casemiro, who was the deepest pivot. And as you can see, both Eriksen and Fernandes out of shot tended to push much higher than Casemiro initially. As Martinez looked to progress with the ball, Mount would be much more aggressive in looking to close him down, hoping to force him into a pass to Varane, who is less talented on the ball. At which stage, if the press was being effective, Aubameyang would then come out to press. But in this case, he doesn't, giving Varane a little bit more room to move forward. And Ten Hag had various ways in which he could look to counter this. Firstly, he could look to push Dallow higher and shift to a lopsided back three, with Shaw remaining deeper. This would make it much more difficult for Mount to directly press Martinez, as if he did, he now had two outlet options, and especially down the left-hand side, this would cause them problems. So Mount would have to be more conservative when pressing, potentially giving Martinez more space. Alternatively, United could look to adapt their shape, shift into more of a 2-1, and having two pivots in and around Aubameyang, so that he couldn't cover both, and this would potentially force a midfielder, usually Jorginho, to push up higher and help to cover. But this pressing shape from Chelsea was not the most robust, particularly because Aubameyang is a striker and doesn't have the best defensive awareness. So at times, he could be caught higher, or Casemiro could drift off of him, allowing Martinez to play the first time pass into the midfield. Alternatively, at times, United were able to initially go wide, and again, Aubameyang wouldn't track his man necessarily, and then find Casemiro in midfield. Either way, this spelled major danger for Chelsea, because now they were 3 versus 2 down. So, when confronted by a man, there was now the potential to play in Fernandes, who was consistently lurking between the lines, and then he would have multiple options with runners ahead of him. So here's an example where Aubameyang is further upfield and not much pressure is applied onto Martinez. The midfield shape from Chelsea in this phase is not too strong, with Jorginho there and Ruben Loftus-Cheek in behind him. As a result, there's an easy pass for Martinez into Fernandes between the lines, and he can then turn to play in Sancho on the run. And here, we have an example where Aubameyang is initially pressing Casemiro, as he had been doing, joined by Mount, who is higher up. But this time, United initially come out wide. So now, both Aubameyang and Sterling are drawn towards Varane, and this opens up a passing lane into Casemiro. And once he receives, Jorginho and Loftus-Cheek are 3 versus 2 down, so Casemiro can play in Fernandes. And now, United are in a good attacking position. And these midfield overloads that United were able to work could be made much worse by United. As firstly, we could see Dallo invert into the midfield, looking to create a 4 versus 3, or, alternatively, if Dallo opted to overlap down the outside, Anthony was also comfortable moving in field. And again, the end result of this would be that it would be easier for United to get into the midfield. But seeing that his team was in trouble, Potter did well and did not wait till halftime to make tactical changes. Instead, 
Kukurea came off, being replaced by Kovacic. And this was the trigger for Chelsea to shift to a 4-4-2 diamond. So where before they had been consistently outnumbered, they now actually had a 4 versus 3 advantage in the midfield. This meant that Mount could permanently look to tie up Casemiro, whilst both pivots were covered with a spare man able to patrol the space in behind. So here, Chelsea now have a front two of Aubameyang and Sterling, and Mount has already picked up Casemiro. With both centre-backs under pressure, De Gea has to look to go long. And here you get a brief glimpse at the Chelsea diamond. Add to that the fact that now both centre-backs could be pressed simultaneously, and Chelsea's defensive shape looked much better. In fact, before Potter made the change, United had 57.4 possession. After this change, United's possession dropped to 48.7. But that's not to say that this shape was perfect for Chelsea. With the centre well covered, it meant that if the forwards did not press strategically, still looking to cover this lateral pass, United could find their men in space, particularly Shaw and Dallo, and this would mean that there was potential for wide overloads. However, for the most part, Loftus-Cheek and Kovacic were effective in knowing when to move out. And the increased space in the wide regions might be one of the reasons that Fred came on for Sancho. Fred moved into the role, previously taken up by Fernandes, and Fernandes moved off to the left-hand side initially, before later moving to centre forward. But from this left-hand side, he was able to be the man who could combine with Shaw and see a lot more of the ball, and for the most part, he looked to get crosses in or thread in balls into the box. And higher up the pitch, before and after the change, we saw Ten Hag's love for overloads. United had a flexible build-up shape that could be a front five with Eriksen and Fernandes pushing high, with the fullbacks remaining deeper, and depending on how Chelsea were pressing, this could become a back three. But more importantly, even though Chelsea were using a back five, Ten Hag would still look to overload them, and this was by using a front six. And similar to their victory midweek, one of the keys to this was being willing to use overlapping fullbacks, who could move much further up the pitch. And one of the keys to this was Casemiro, who is comfortable enough on the ball to be the sole pivot to then look for the penetrative passes to the men higher up, who were also dynamic, knowing when to push high and when to drop in if the midfielders look to cover them. However, they didn't really have much luck with this structure. And Ten Hag was willing to leave Casemiro deeper generally, and you can see the numbers he's willing to commit to the attack in a bid to overload the opponent. But Chelsea were just as interesting in possession, so let's take a look. From the goal kick, United were much more willing to be high pressing than Chelsea were, and knowing that they were outnumbered in the midfield, Chelsea initially looked to put Silva into the defensive midfield position when Kepa had the ball, creating a 3 versus 3 there. However, United were fairly strategic with their pressing structure, so either Anthony or Sancho would join Rashford in the press, and with only two centre-backs in this position, central progression would be much more difficult, even with Silva providing an extra central option. So, on the occasions where Chelsea were more successful, Kepa would play a quick, accurate pass into Aspilicueta. However, at times we did see United being able to cover that pass, forcing Chelsea into longer passes. And it wasn't long before Chelsea altered their build-up shape, with Silva dropping in alongside Kepa for the goal kick, whilst Cucurella and Chalaba moved higher and wider. But again, this caused problems for Chelsea at times, because Rashford was strategic with his press. So, if he pressed from the outside on this side, he would be joined by Sancho, who would look to cover the second centre-back. This would leave the obvious choice into the centre-back, who is now in the full-back position, where United could then look to close off all options, apply pressure, and win the ball back. Initially, Thiago is higher, but when Rashford presses, he's able to cover Thiago with his cover shadow. In this case, Sancho is slow to join the press, so Chalaba can find Aspen Equator, and with Mount tying up Shaw, Aspen Equator now has room in which to drive. The back five shape has now altered for Chelsea, with Thiago Silva being alongside Kepa in this position meaning both Chalaba and Cucurella occupy these wider positions. Rashford looks to press, whilst Anthony is ready to come in to cut off that option. As a result, when the ball does find Chalaba, United are in a good position to press. But as discussed, whenever we saw the wide man move in too early on the press, it was an easy pass for Kepa, and Chelsea would now have the advantage in the wide region. And in open play, before Potter's change, Chelsea were really struggling to see much of the ball in midfield regions. 
This is because United had the extra man, so Casemiro could be the sole defensive midfielder, allowing Eriksen and Fernandes to stick to the pivots like glue. At the same time, Sancho and Anthony would occupy these positions, ready to retreat if necessary, but also able to press the wider centre-backs when called for. This would make it extremely difficult for Chelsea to play through. So this was the common occurrence, with Anthony in a good position to press Cucurella, Sancho ready on Chalaba. At the same time, Eriksen can cover Jorginho and Fernandes on Loftus-Cheek. And before the change, Potter could occasionally still find success in the midfield. This was because Mount and Sterling could both look to drop to make a midfield box, and in this case, Casemiro would have two men to pick out. So, on a couple of occasions, a quick pass was able to find a man in a promising situation. But, for the most part, Ten Hag has faith in his centre-backs to be highly aggressive, Martinez in particular. So, Casemiro could pick up one man, and no matter how deep the other dropped, Martinez would be right on his tail, making it a 4 vs 4 there, and a 1 vs 1 here in which case we could see the fullbacks tuck in to make somewhat of a back three. So here once again Fernandes on Loftus-Cheek and Eriksen on Jorginho. But the difference now is that both Sterling and Mount have dropped deeper, making this 4 vs 3 in the midfield. However, this is only temporary because we can already see Martinez is highly aggressive onto Sterling, effectively making this a 4 vs 4 once again. So the switch to the diamond was highly necessary for Chelsea. And United were still looking to be aggressive in the press, and this would mean Fernandes and Eriksen would still be high, and Casemiro would also join at times, meaning that Mount would have more freedom between the lines. And the difference now is that with two centre forwards, it would be much more difficult for Martinez or Varane to attack the man in between the lines. However, with effective cover shadows and positioning up front, it was still a difficult, often aerial ball to find Mount, so it still wasn't the most effective but they did still look to use positional interchange to drag centre-backs out of position and create opportunities. But one thing higher up that Ten Hag did do is that as we know, Chelsea liked to attack with the front five to overload back fours, which looks something like this. But Casemiro, as he did do for Madrid at times, was willing to temporarily drop into the back line, making it a five versus five and preventing that overload before knowing when to push back into midfield when necessary. Overall, this was nothing short of a tactical game of chess between two great managers, with both going through their deck of cards to find the solution. Much like the scoreline, in my opinion, the tactical score is a stalemate, with their adaptability meaning both managers earn a 7. But leave your ratings down below. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.